Hey Yamauchi, do you know why these stairs are so steep and narrow? My boss and I are visiting my, our new client in Kyoto, Japan. Their office is at the top of the, these stairs. Look at the stairs. They are so steep that you can't skip steps. And you can't go side by side because they are so narrow. One person at a time. Let's say you are at the top of the stairs and see attackers charging at you. What would you do? You just need to kick the first person off. <laughs> That's how they prevent anybody from making a raid. Listen, Yamauchi, there is another reason. The stairs are so narrow that you can't take out a samurai sword. Imagine killing somebody with a machete in a car. Can you do that? No, you can't. You can't even move such a big knife because it's a confined space. That's how they protect their territory and minimize the damage. Huh, that's brilliant. It totally makes sense. Wait, who carries a samurai sword? <laughs> Yakuza? Japanese mafia? Is our client Yakuza? I'm a programmer. We deal with all kinds of businesses, like mom and pop stores, corporations, schools, and the government. But Yakuza too? Yakuza is like Italian mafia. They don't use guns. They just dump people in the concrete. <laughs> there are so many buildings in Japan that may have bodies in the foundation. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Oh, and if you try leaving a family, you may lose a finger or two. How do I know? Because I love watching Yakuza movies and TV shows. <laughs> Yakuza, it is said that the origin of the name came from numbers. Some Japanese name can be translated to numbers. For example, my name, Mio, is three and four, which doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Yakuza is eight, nine, and three. The numbers came from a traditional card game. The sum 20 is the worst number in the game, which means you lose. Some people say Yakuza losers. They say Yakuza do nothing good to society, but I disagree because I was saved by Yakuza once. After graduating my high school, I started living alone in Osaka. Living alone is so grown up. When somebody knocks on my door, they are not there to see my mother, father, or brother. They are there see, to see me. I get my own visitors. So when the doorbell rings, I answer. But soon, I stop doing that because most of them are not fun. But one day, I opened the door for a guy because he didn't seem fit in any category. He's young, probably in his late 20s. He says he sells futons. Futon? Oh, I don't need it. I'm happy with what I have. No, thank you. But he keeps talking. Then he asked for a glass of water. Oh, I'm sorry. How rude I am. Please come in and have some tea. He's fun. He can carry a conversation with a college kid. But 30 minutes later, I start feeling bored. So I tell him I need to go. But he keeps talking. An hour passed. I start feeling annoyed. So I tell him I really need to go. But he keeps talking. Four hours passed. Four hours, right? Yeah, I know. I'm exhausted, my head is pounding. I just want him to leave. I finally realized that the only way to get rid of him, rid of him is to buy a futon. <laughs> yeah. So I sign up. After he leaves, I'm sitting on the floor leaning against the futon that is still in the box. 
Who needs a thousand dollar futon? I don't. But the damage is done. It's expensive. But if I keep it for 10 years, yeah, 27 cents a day, which doesn't seem too bad. Okay, I can justify my stupidity and laugh it off. A phone rings. It's my brother. So I tell him the funny futon story that just happened. He isn't amused. <laughs> Mio, don't you dare to keep the stupid futon. But I already signed a contract. It doesn't matter. Call the consumer hotline for advice. The law will protect you. He's adamant. So following his advice, next day, I send the certified letter to the futon company. They arranged the pickup immediately. I was relieved how quickly it was resolved. When the doorbell rings, I answer and regret it. The same futon guy came. I know, his attitude and voice, everything is different from the last time. He's not here to pick up the futon. He's here to scare me off. He raises his voice and tries to hit me. One of the swings hit my chin. Tears rolled down my cheek. No, it didn't hurt. I barely felt it. It was just my defense mechanism. Those scam bags need to feel superior. He's satisfied with my tears, but still he lectures me for an hour and leaves without the food on. Next day, my brother calls. Mio, be ready. They're gonna pick up the food on tomorrow. No, I don't wanna deal with them anymore. Don't worry. Now you are untouchable. <laughs> untouchable? What does he mean? <laughs> Mio, do you know do you remember Mr. G from the Yakitori restaurant I used to work at? He used to be Yakuza, and he took care of it. <laughs> Mr. G, the owner of the restaurant? He was Yakuza? That's so cool! <laughs> Wait, doesn't he have 10 fingers? <laughs> Mio, you watch too much TV. The next day, the same guy came. But he was not scary anymore. He was polite. He apologized, picked up the futon, and left in a minute. And the money was back to my bank account, account, bank account instantly. Wow, it's over, just like that. What happened to the futon guy? His attitude was night and day. Did Mr. G torture him? <laughs> if he did, only fear. Because Hearing him for four hours was a torture for me. Yeah. <laughs> I have to thank Mr. G. Three days later, I go to the yakitori restaurant to thank him. I bought an expensive sake, $100. <laughs> As a token of appreciation. Moments later, Mr. G arrives. Two guys are stationed at the entrance to keep their eyes on the surroundings. Mr. G didn't look scary though. Just a regular guy, friendly and old. And he says, I hate bullies, especially the guys who raise their against women. I just can't stand them. On my way here, I saw a guy hitting a woman. So I just dragged him out of the car and beat the crap out of him. <laughs> he laughed cheerfully, like he's telling the funniest joke. So Mr. G, what happened to the futon guy? Oh, that slime ball? He's such a wimp. He freaked out when I told him my name. <laughs> and when he leaves, he gives me his phone number. Call me anytime. When, you, when somebody bothers you, I will teach him a lesson. 
That was the last time and only time I saw him. But he called me a couple of times to check me how I'm doing. We seldom see or notice Yakuza in Japan because they are hidden, 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 they are hidden in society, like bodies dumped in the buildings. <laughs> Yamauchi, time to go. My boss's voice snaps me back to reality. We line up and start going up the steep, narrow stairs, one at a time. Before we reach the top of the stairs, I look over the shoulder and whisper, Hey boss, is our client Yakuza? <laughs> Thank you. She may or may not be Yakuza, everybody. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs>